is a sexual wellness brand called Vush. These guys want you to love loving yourself. Whoever you are, wherever you come from, whoever you love, you are welcomed by Vush just as you are. These guys are for the beginners, for the nervous, for the curious, for the brave, for anyone who was ever made to feel shame about their body. We're going to be discussing some of the exciting expansion into the sexual wellness industry. But before we do, I want to show you this amazing new promotional video that these guys have just released. Check this out. Yeah, you're better. Okay, we need to talk about this. You have never heard of Bush. Let me be the first to introduce you. Self-care is such an important part of our physical and mental well-being. Yeah, you're better. You are empowered, confident. Honestly, you're just in a better mood. Bachelor star Abby Chatfield partnered with Australian company Bush. The 30 day I come first challenge with Bush. Yeah, you better. Yeah, you better. Not so much about sex sexiness. You know, take control of your sex life and give yourself the release that you have been needing and that you deserve. Yeah, you better. How incredible. I absolutely love that, Fiona. You guys did such a good job. Look, thanks, Raven. Yes, it's great to see what the brand's achieved, what it stands for. And, you know, the future is full of opportunities, basically. Absolutely. Well, I will introduce you now. I am joined by Fiona, who is the general manager at Vush. Can you tell us a little bit about what your day-to-day -day looks like? Wow, day-to-day. -day, we're always talking about sex, number one. <laughs> I've never been in a role where I've talked so much about sex. Uh, we know each other's sex lives quite intimately. Um, how to use sex toys, why to use sex toys. Um, but really, more than that, it's all about everyone feeling the passion in the team, about helping others feel empowered and helping others feel like they've got, you know, a real sense of self-love and purpose. And that's what just keeps us all going. So, you know, my typical day is analysing numbers, looking at stats, looking for opportunities, coming up with creative ideas, consumer insights. You know, we, we get a lot, we do a lot of research, understand our customers better, um, and also interacting with our customers and see how we've sort of changed their life, improved their life, and always looking for, you know, how can we spread the word more, broader, how we can have greater, more insightful conversations and build engagement and how we can share the, the vibe, the energy of the brand so we positively influence people. And, yeah. you know, that's the great thing about working at Bush. I think it's incredible what you guys are doing and especially around the likes of the branding and that's where I've got a question is you every time you go to the likes of your site, you're nine times out of 10 likely to see someone that you can relate to yourself. You're like, oh, that reminds me of me. I feel 10 times more comfortable. It's that relatability factor. Is that something in turn that you then need to refresh continuously? I know that brands, you know, tend to rely on a, a select few models, for example, or ambassadors, that sort of thing. How far and wide do you guys go in that respect? Look, you know, one of the values, one of the things that the brand stands for is inclusivity. Um, it's something we talk about every single day um, and demonstrating that's really key to us. So we go pretty wide, you know, inclusivity can mean a lot of different things to different people. But to us, it doesn't matter what your cultural background is, what... Um, your size is. It doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is. We're there supporting all people. We want to show that it's a safe place. That's really, really, really important to us. It's a place that you can come to and gain knowledge. You can confide in, you can talk to us. We can support people on their various journeys of self-love. And um, showing, you know, 
everyday people and that's the critical element everyday people's really key to you know making the brand accessible making it feel like it's relevant and making it also feel like um, it's something other people can get passionate about. And I think that's, you know, one of the signature elements of the Vush branding. People feel comfortable. They feel approachable. And it's in a category that normally people would run away from. Abs- absolutely. And, I mean, going to your site, initially it almost feels like a young fresh skincare brand or something you know like it's just so inviting and I think you've done a great job there when it comes to the likes of what's your in-house quote or what's the mantra that you guys live by how does that sit and even if it's an internal one yeah look it's all about empowering people and do it shamelessly so that's what we're about you know shamelessly empower people help them embrace their own sexuality their own self-love journey. Um, And it's all about really making sure every single time we do something, it's about is this empowering people? That's the first question. Number two, is it inclusive? Number three, does the way we present the information, does it have our unique tone of voice? You know, Mm -hmm. which not only is approachable, but we try to be cheeky. We try to be playful. We try to take serious topics and have a little bit of humour around it. And I think that's what really drives the love that people have for the brand because it really represents them. It's a big sister vibe and that's really important. Oh, I love that. That it, Yeah, it feels inviting for sure. When you're looking at the likes of advertising challenges, actually before we go down that, mm. You are looking at you, your audience is everyone, literally. That when you're talking inclusive inclusivity and the vertical that you're in, it really is you're talking to everyone and anyone. Do you find that you face challenges when it comes to the more conservative, or you know, as our grandparents would say, the prudish, um, or maybe when it comes to religion as well? I mean, you know, I'm from I'm half African and I could Mm -hmm. say that that won't go down as well over there as what it does here. It's not as invited. So how do you kind of break down those barriers and learn to speak and educate in their languages essentially? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, And sometimes it's trial and error. Sometimes we make a few mistakes. Mm -hmm. Um, What we try to demonstrate is a lot of compassion, a lot of support and You know, any direct messages we get, we always respond to them. We don't shy away from anything. Um, So I think that authenticity is really key. Um, But outside of that, it's making sure that the way we present information is not too intimidating and too sort of stretching the envelope for people. I mean, we're a brand for beginners and novices, Um, although a lot of our customer base would now probably say that they feel like they're intermediates in this category. So over time, when people start sort of experimenting and starting to know themselves better, um, it's certainly something that they start to want to understand other types of sex toys. But, you know, we've just done a big initiative, which is our I Come First Challenge. And the whole point behind the challenge is to actually break down some of those stigmas and those barriers, whether they've been society-based, whether they've been their upbringing-based, whether it's been based on lack of knowledge and education. So part of this challenge is to bring some fun to, to the party and to really get, you know, people to consider self-love through the process of masturbation which has a lot of health benefits and a lot of care benefits as well and through this journey of 30 days we've built a Facebook community where it's a safe place for people to come to and ask questions and to get support from other members in the group Um, and so therefore they may be from different backgrounds and trying to overcome guilt and those sorts sorts of sort of fears that may Mm -hmm. be holding them back 
Um, but what's really interesting is we found through that journey of 30 days, if people commit to it, their whole mindset changes. And some of those issues of my upbringing or my religion or it's just not right or I don't really understand why I should do this, we actually take them on a journey of educating, understanding the body better and mm -hmm. also how to feel comfortable in your own skin. So, you know, everyone comes back to content and education with lots of different brands and it's really critical in this category as well. Um, to break down people's fears. I think as well, that, that just to come off the back of that would be to you guys, how do you explain the importance of sexual wellness in terms of health? You know, like they tell you eat five veggies and fruit a day. You're supposed to do 10,000 steps. You need to get eight hours sleep, drink two and a half liters of water, you know, all of those sorts of things. But never are they saying, make sure you get an orgasm before you go to sleep. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like that's just not something that's ever said or acknowledged and I understand you know being in the sexual wellness space and we'll touch on the advertising things and what you yeah. can and can't say but yeah how does that how does that all work in terms of yeah you know again it's it's all about educating so we actually track a couple of different measures one mm -hmm. is understanding where people sit in terms of their energy levels where they sit in terms of their motivation levels where they sit in terms of mental clarity and also they're just their overall sort of physical well-being. And we get people to actually rate um, how they're feeling, for example, with this challenge before they started the challenge and then week by week. And what we've found is even people embracing the concept of masturbation over a period of two weeks, all of those factors have doubled from where they started. So I wow. think the proof is in the pudding. Um, you know, at the end of the day, people come into understanding this sort of category and understanding products and understanding themselves um, by sort of, you know, let me just find out a little bit more and give it a try. But what they find out is they want to prioritise themselves more. And when they do that, all these other benefits that come from self-love and self-pleasure actually fall out of it. And it improves confidence. I mean, confidence factor was probably our number one factor that increased more than double, which is absolutely wow. huge. And that's what's so exciting about working with these sorts of products and with this brand because you're really positively helping people feel good about themselves. And when, Absolutely. you know, we all go into those little slumps, this is a tool that people can actually fall back to to actually care for themselves again. So there's lots of health benefits. Not yeah, only doing that, it helps you with your pelvic floor and there's lots of other health benefits as well. You've obviously got this amazing community that you're building out. And, I mean, there's comments coming through at the moment that, you know, the thing that is admired about your community is, the people of the brand that you guys have, you know, in the community that you've acquired. And apparently it just, it feels so supportive and inviting for them. And even comments on social posts to the reviews and the website, it's nice to be a part of. And the fact that you do these challenges where it openly invites people to be involved and get engaged and, you know, be dynamic, push the, push the boat out essentially for themselves. And yeah. I, I noticed that you've got, cause this is, you know, acquiring customers is a whole nother ball game for you guys. And, Absolutely. I mean, I, Absolutely. I love the fact that, you know, you've got the foreplay program. I saw, I think that that is yeah. great. And that's like, you know, the way that you can gather data is like, we've got new toys, test them out. And I'm curious to know, what's the questionnaire like? Or are you asking them to, yeah, how does that all work? You know, in terms of gaining insights in order to produce better product and to get better, um, to release correctly and at the right times and know what people really want because that's usually a closed door thing and you don't usually know. Look, you don't. But like anything, if you break down the barriers and if as a brand you're vulnerable and you show vulnerability and you show that support and particularly because we've got that sisterly vibe, I think that people feel really comfortable. So like any brand, you ask the questions, you ask the hard questions, you, um, you put forward suggestions um, mm -hmm. And you know what, like, it's really interesting to see how people are vulnerable 
in terms of even admitting whether they've had sex the last time they've had sex. I mean, there's so many elements there that we really get down to some very raw areas and it's building trust. Like anything, trust is the most important element of a brand. Trust and authenticity, I'll say, um, mm -hmm. really important elements of a brand. And, um, you know, if you have programs in place that help motivate people to share with their friends and family to also benefit from that, that also helps with coming back to your question you were starting with in terms of new customers and acquisition, if you've got people that love your brand, they will want to talk about it and the benefits yeah. with their friends and family. And that's so key and so critical. And just helping to leverage that even further um, and help them feel great in that process um, is, you know, a winning strategy in its own right. Wow. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a great point to make. And then looking at acquiring customers that you don't have word of mouth yeah. for or you know they say at the moment it's taking up to 40 different touch points to try and get yeah. that customer to convert and it used to be something like eight when you're doing those touch points you guys have got limitations talk to me about a bit about that look we've got a lot of limitations a lot of traditional um channels like tiktok like even facebook or meta ads there's a lot of restrictions in place. And TikTok's just a no-go zone in terms of paid advertising, um, unfortunately. Um, but we do a good job with our organic, and that's probably quite key and it's more authentic. Uh, right. But working with influencers is a key strategy that we have in place for them to share why they love the product and mm -hmm. with their communities. And so that creates talkability and sharing the brand name and, you know, um, educating people and motivating them to come to our website and obviously work with the tools on the website to then make a decision. But, you know, you've got to think outside the square. I mean, we do do um, Google Ads and there's a lot of opportunity there. I particularly love Performance Max, which is a new uh, acquisition channel for us. And we're doing a lot of trial and error with that, but learning through the process and optimising and improving our results. Um, podcasting is another really great opportunity for us. And, you know, there's less limitations in that space, uh, particularly, you know, sexual wellness, self-care, self-pleasure is quite a talked about topic now. It's less taboo. And podcasting is a, you know, channel where people are authentic and they're sharing sure. personal stories. So that's another great opportunity and channel for us. So there's lots of different ways. It's not one, one approach is the winning approach for us. Um, we have to be innovative. We have to look at our messaging and how we're communicating and uh, be prepared to change that on a regular basis. Uh, we've got to be careful of words that we use as well. Um, so it is restrictive, but if you have a restrictive mindset, then you won't achieve what you're looking to achieve. It's all about sharing what the benefit is and, you know, what the brand stands for and the tone of voice all of that really creates that community and the talkability as well so yeah love that if you are tuning in right now please by all means leave some questions in the chat and we'll get to those what would you say is the most misunderstood part of bush what what's a question that you or commonly miss you know common misconception i think that we're thrown into the category of adult toys um, and that whole category is zoned as being erotic and almost dirty overtones. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you look at brands like Bush, it actually is probably the most welcoming, um, clean brand that you could um, embrace. Um, and so there's this sort of tug of war that we're working in a category that has so many um, mis misnomers yeah. and um, we're a brand that's really trying to destigmatize and break down those, those elements. 
outside of that, um, once people see the brand, find out about the brand, understand some of the products better, um, it's a brand people love. That's fantastic. And that's why that's why we get so many rave reviews. I mean, reviews is another key strategy that we really leverage as much as possible. Share your story, share how it's changed your life. Um, and that just sort of ripples out uh, quite strongly as well. So reviews is key. User-generated content, also key, because it's people's personal um, impact with the products as well. So using all of those elements work very strongly for us. In terms of, yeah, in terms of that customer experience as well, obviously for people to visit your site, it's it very obvious that you guys are all about inclusivity and diversity. But what about those in terms of the actual accessibility? So for those who are maybe visually impaired or um, audibly in, impaired, maybe they're physically impaired, what sort of stance or what sort of movements does Vush put into place in order to accommodate that? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, in terms of visually impaired, we probably haven't embraced that at this point in time. Um, certainly in terms of um, having making sure we've got channels that people can contact us if they've got questions probably nice. is, is the key thing. It's more one-to-one -one type of um, approach. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would, say, I would say that's sort of the approach that we take there. Uh, gotcha. We're certainly a brand which, you know, we're really thinking through the impact on the world and sustainability and that's a key um, area for us that we're growing and making sure we're using recycled packaging, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but more than anything, I think our biggest impact is to help people from a mental health perspective and really building that self-esteem and self-love and they're probably not too many brands can do that in a positive way. Um, making sure that we've got tools on site like quizzes, making sure that we've got yeah. um, reviews that people can go through, making sure that we've got um, um, tools on site that if people don't really know where to start, we can send them to certain blogs that we've written that's sort of tailored at different levels. So it's informative. Um, all of those things sort of add together to help people on their journey. And whether it takes some people, it takes just a couple touch points. Other people can take quite a few touch points. Um, and it's all about building self-confidence. That is amazing. Let's wrap things up with one last question. I would like to know from you, either personally, Fiona, or as a business, what is your biggest achievement to date? Wow, um, great question. I think as a business, just keeping it in context, Vush, the greatest achievement is the fact that we've managed to take a small Australian brand global. Uh, we're in the US, we're in the UK. Our brand's been associated with, you know, some real icons in the business like Cardi B. It was featured in the Cardi B Up video, which is just phenomenal. Um, we have a lot of high-profile influencers that love our brand. Abby Chatfield, that collaboration has been amazing. And we've got more to come. And, you know, watch this space. Over the next six months, you'll see a lot more roll out, which really takes the brand to the next level, keeps it relevant, and um, shares other stories in the process, which is super exciting. So um, motivating the team is probably the other big success that I see, you know, as a leader of the team, keeping everyone working together as one common goal and achieving wins and celebrating them together, I would say is, yeah, the biggest achievement. Amazing. Well, thank you so, so much, Fiona, for coming sh and sharing some of the stories around Vush and its success. That is absolutely fantastic. For those who have felt inspired and they're ready to take the next step on their own sexual wellness journey, head to vush.com.au. Go and check it out. The team is more than accommodating. Again, thank you so much, Fiona. Thanks so much, Raven. It's been a pleasure.